Welcome back, ZBrushers, and thanks for tuning into the ZBrush Podcast. We've got a very exciting episode today for you with our guests, Caton Calloway and David Viola. Caton and David both work for a games company called Section Studios. In this episode, we're going to be discussing a game that they created called Rival Crimson Chaos. Section Studios is a company who makes games on mobile platform, PC, console, VR, and as they put it on their website, whatever platform really smart people come up with, which is great. Caton Calloway is the game director for Crimson Chaos and is a veteran in the game design and creation world, also working as a lead character artist and art director at Section Studios. David Viola is the lead character artist for Crimson Chaos and works on a ton of these incredibly detailed and colorful assets for this mobile game, which we all found to be a wonderful game and really so cool to see ZBrush used to make a mobile game where the power of ZBrush really shows in the final product. In this episode, there's tons of great insight from David and Caton on their professional experience and what goes into their roles and responsibilities, as well as how ZBrush plays a big part in all of this. So for those of you getting into the game design industries or just getting started, we discuss what employers are looking for in a ZBrush and 3D artist, as well as the methodology in repurposing high fidelity ZBrush characters or environment designs for the final mobile game experience. And we actually get a chance to fire up Rival Crimson Chaos and play the game and I get to go head to head with Caton while walking through the game mechanics. So you've got to check this out. It's a free game. There's a link to Rival Crimson Chaos game in the description of this episode. And you can also find it in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And a quick request to all of you who have been watching our ZBrush Live content. We invite all of you to join us on our Discord channel, which if you aren't familiar with Discord, it's basically a chat application we now use during our ZBrush live streams. So if you're watching on any of these channels, be sure to check that out. The Discord invitation link is provided in the description of the info of this podcast. Please like and subscribe to our channels. Drop us some comments or some feedback. And on that note, all of us at Pixelogic want to give a huge shout out to all of you who have been subscribing to our YouTube channel. And recently, about a week ago, Thanks to all of you, we finally hit 100,000 subscribers. So we can't thank you all enough. This is such a great motivation for all of us ZBrush Live members and all of the entire Pixelogic team to keep pushing our channels and continuing to push the kinds of ZBrush content we're creating for all of you. So thank you, thank you to all of you ZBrushers out there for supporting this whole Pixelogic ZBrush experience. We can't thank you guys enough. I don't know if I said thank you enough. Thank you? Thank you. That about covers it. Let's get to the episode. This is the ZBrush Podcast with Section Studios artists, Caton Calloway and David Viola. Well, I got to thank you guys for coming on officially. You guys are here to talk about your gaming as work for Section Studios, for those that don't know, and your game that you're coming to talk about, which we actually are going to be able to play pretty soon. Um, well, I'd like to introduce you guys first. David Viola? Viola. Okay. And Caton Calloway. Yeah. Caton, we've actually met a couple times briefly. Yeah, yeah. I want to say you were one of the first official... Uh, sculpt off contestants. Yeah, yeah. I was in round one. I was it, in the first one. The first I think round. I did the first two. The original round, which was yeah. at 3D Printer World Expo. Yep. That was one where we had the big center stage with the sort of like boxing yeah. ring lights. And these like two people got up at once and just sculpted for, I think we had an hour. Yeah. Just made stuff. Dude, that was such a great experience. That I mean, it being was really here, fun. It was, right? Yeah. What was, it, what was the experience like for you being was, in that thing? Was it, it was good. It was fun. It was more just fun to get together, everyone, and uh, and just do this event, you know? Um, yeah. It was just kind of like a new thing, you know? Yeah. And you guys set it up to kind of be a show match yeah. type set up. <laughs> it was kind of new for everyone. So we got up there and made something in an hour, and we're like, wow, all right, you know? Yeah. Did what we could, Yeah, you know? Kind of that lunch crunch kind of thing. It was. Well, I think that that was the whole sort of original inception, which we always, yeah. we always bring that up in the podcast or other things. The, the original person was officially Danny Williams that I think came up with yeah. the lunch crunch concept. Yeah. And then... Uh, Brian, I think, continued that because he yeah. worked with Danny Williams at Blue Sky Studios, I think. They worked somewhere together. Yeah. And then you guys really took it off, which yeah, that Sony. was such a good time for ZBrush because that was right yeah. when Dynamesh came out, right? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm like the versions just they go blend together. I can never remember what time was what, but that yeah, was we Dynamesh. We went crazy with lunch crunches for a while at, at yeah. Sony. You guys had that thread 
which was it was just like it started off with I think you guys all did Super Mario mm-hmm. lunch crunches we and then themes. Did, those themes were so great. Yeah, that we're, was fun. We're trying to bring that back. Do you guys watch any of our ZBrush Live content? Yeah, like sometimes. the streamers. Mm-hmm. We want to try and implement that kind of a concept, something along those lines, but do it live. Yeah, but it just comes down to who's going to do it and what the theme is, and, and I'll join in. Yeah. Yeah, so stuff. so this game you guys are bringing in, which we've been I've actually played this morning. It's a beautiful game. Thanks. It's give me the title again. It's Rival. It's Rival Crimson X Chaos. Crimson X Chaos. Does the X have any specific like indication for something, or is that? It does. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's more. I guess we say X, but it's also you can call cross. it cross. Cross. So. Um, so basically, Crimson and Chaos are like two like um, they represent two like creators of the world, and Cross is like half breed. So that's okay. where you get like werewolves and gargoyles and oh. vampires and stuff. So, so crimson, that's sort of crimson's the... like the natural side. That's like we call it crimson. It's like uh, could get into the backstory, I guess, a bit. But like it's like the blood of the creator who was who died from chaos. Okay. And they had this great war in the past, and it created like all these creatures. And then the cross is the crossbreed of the two. I see. So it kind of infuses how you yeah. designed each of these characters yeah. and what sort of sets those two groups apart. Yeah, basically. Okay. Well, well, I guess before we get into the game, because I do want to... It does mean one other thing, actually. Oh, and okay. Cro- so, like, uh, if you ever play fighting games like uh, Tekken Cross... Street Fighter Cross Tekken, I think, or X Tekken, oh, it's yeah. mashup, too. So, like, they, it's also, like, mashup games, or, and, like, ours is like that. So, like, all the champions are from the different sides, and they mash up together to make a team. Yeah. So kind of that as well. Okay. Okay. In terms of, like, fighting games. Yeah. Yeah, which I I'm vaguely remember that game, the Street Fighter um, Mortal Kombat. There's a bunch of fighting games that do this kind of cross stuff. Okay. So it's becoming more of a sort of standardized theme. I kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, a thing. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me about what your guys' roles are at Section and what you guys do as, as far as the game or in general. Because you guys do a lot of stuff. Yeah. I think you guys yeah. have a lot of... I mean, my <clears throat> my position is lead character artist, but, yeah, I do stuff on the environments and stuff with uh, the, the towers and the arenas. and yeah. help, I just help out wherever. It kind of leads all the 3D in general yeah. at this point. Okay. So it's like I kind of encompass, like, 3D, but I am a lead character artist. So when I when I... When I get to do what I want to do, it's making the characters. Uh, right, yeah. which I guess we all kind of have to do things that we don't always want to do sometimes, yeah. I guess, in the production and atmosphere yeah. for the most well, I'm part. I'm always, like, very happy to help out and, like, put my stamp on anything. But Yeah. But, yeah, you know, it's, it's a... We're a small team, too. Yeah. So guys like Dave, who are more versatile, will end up naturally just helping out with stuff. So, like, we had to block in some Adams this week, and he was there doing some basic block-ins for a new character. Yeah. You know, so we all kind of he pitches in in a lot of ways. That's kind of the I see I see that a lot with smaller studios where you guys have a very tight knit team where everybody kind of collaborates. Like yeah. you have your primary roles, I would imagine, but then you do other things where you might help somebody else pick up yep. the slack or there's extra workload maybe. Yeah, yeah. And what about you? Are you? Yeah. So I, I'm the game director on this one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so I I came to section to help art direct and kind of lead the character pipeline. That's where mm-hmm. I met Dave. Is when I showed up and I was quasi lead character artist, I guess, but mainly leading character pipeline and making characters and art directing. Mm-hmm. And then when we made the shift to this, I became the game director at that time, and that's when I had to let go kind of the character kind of role. Yeah. And Dave took over, and so okay. he's been leading the team since. So, what's the primary as a as the director in that position? What do you do? You sort of just oversee everyone. Or what sort of inputs do you have as far as the story yeah. and all those things go? Um, I'm involved with pretty much everything. So my biggest, my role, it's hard to say, honestly. I, I kind of do everything in a sense where I work with the guys in each part of the team pretty closely. Yeah. And help either, like, keep them, like, going in a certain direction or just keep things in check. Or, you know, now and then it could be, like, helping just someone make a decision to, like, go forward with something. Yeah. You know, like, sometimes a hard thing with these games is... Um, feeling confident about something or moving past iterating. And I can be like, no, that's good. Just let's keep going. Yeah. Um, so I kind of have my hands in a lot of stuff. Every now and then I'll maybe try and design a character if I get lucky or have yeah. time. Um, but just a little bit of everything. And, and as the game grows, I'm getting a little bit having to give more and more to certain people to just handle and manage. And, yeah. you know, I can't do everything, obviously. 
So. Well, being being an artist, because I know we were just talking about this before we got started. You've you've worked for a few studios in, yeah. in LA and other places. Is it hard for you to let go of those that stuff? <laughs> yeah, you know, like <laughs> I mean, being you guys are both ZBrush guys, yeah, and, very much. Yeah, and we were just talking about the lunch crunches, which. I don't know. So you just get into ZBrush when you can, just to yeah, keep the muscle going. Yeah, this last year has going. been a little. I, I do still like at home. Mm-hmm. I'll do stuff. I'll paint and sometimes sculpt at home. This last year, though, since we've been making this game, I haven't as much as I would like to. And I had a moment at the uh, end of last year where you know everyone posts on Instagram like they're like, you know, their little collages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like I was looking at my Instagram, and I'm like almost shed a tear, not because I needed a collage, but more like. I'm like, I hardly made anything. <laughs> you, that's so got to like, be a little disheartening, but also... I mean, we made a game. Yeah, so which is different. a portfolio it, in itself. It is, but I love still making... Like, I was, we have a new character coming out, and I'm like, I'm going to make this, Dave. I'm making this one. <laughs> I'm going to scope this guy. Put yeah. my foot down. I'm doing I haven't that. heard that in a while. So I'm like, I, I'm, I'm back on the team. You know, <laughs> I got to make a character. Um, so I, I miss it a lot, but um, I'm trying to just own this role right now for the game and do the best yeah. I can. And, yeah. uh, you know, and then I, at some point, hopefully I'll be able to step back and get more back into the character part. Not even so much the character pipeline as much as just the conceptualizing of them. I like right. a lot. You know, if I don't ever make another game asset again, it's probably not the end of the world. Yeah. But I do like sculpting and painting and stuff. And I love Z- being in ZBrush. You know, it's just fun. Yeah. So hopefully I'll get more and more time as this kind of establishes and we get our bearings going and, and like a more consistent pipeline because it's yeah. been the last year has been crazy for us making this thing so I haven't had as much time to make stuff but more just help manage people mm-hmm. and keep it moving so. even for us who have made so like I too like haven't had a lot of personal work but I've been making characters for this game for like two years oh wow but I haven't had I've just been able to start showing that stuff yeah so even I was like it seems like I had nothing but I'm like I know I have these things on the back burner yeah but yeah I'm just waiting to be able to. Is that is th- th- I always wonder about that. Like working in a studio atmosphere where our culture now, especially in the art world, 3D and all of it is is all s- very much r- sort of on the surface of Instagram and art station. Yeah. Everybody's posting all the time. So yeah. not being able to share certain things where you have IP restrictions and or you know the game's not out, so you can't talk about it. Is that tough? To to like what you're saying about not being able to have a workout. You're like I have all this work, but I can't show it. I feel like that's got to be – you have to somehow just post something else or do something else. Well, for me personally, I've always had a uh, an issue posting all my stuff and, mm-hmm. like, and like, getting on the forums. Yeah. I'm just – it's part of my personality. Plus, I'm a little older. <laughs> yeah. Like, these, these young guys are, like, constantly on every yeah. forum and, like, up to date with, like, every yeah. post and every uh, software. Yeah. Where me, it's, like – I actually have to like make an effort, right? Put that stuff out. Yeah, I I definitely can reciprocate on that level. I I have a hard drive full of hundreds of characters that I've never shared. I've gotten to like ninety eight percent done, and by the time I get to that point, I'm like, yeah, I'm just you know I don't want to go through it. to make a post and do renders and get different turnarounds and blah blah blah. Yeah. It's a whole nother process. That's, You're like, that's always the hard part. You get yeah. the sculpt that you like. But like finishing at that last couple percentages, of yeah. Like, and then you don't want to put something out there that doesn't look finished. But you're like, "What the sculpt's cool." Yeah. Presentation is yeah. a whole nother thing yeah. for sure. But I don't know. I, well, tell me, David. Do you do you have a Dave or David? Dave. Can I call you Dave? Okay, yeah. good. Because David just I don't, either either one doesn't surgical. matter. Yeah. And, yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, for me, it's the exercise of just doing it. It's something that if I didn't do this professionally, I'd be doing it on my own for sure in yeah. some way, shape, or form. So it doesn't really matter too much to me to not post it. I do feel a little insecure about it sometimes if I don't post something or right. share it. But I feel like you would probably get in a lot of satisfaction of just completing that thing, whatever yeah. it is. Do yeah, you feel? You, yeah, and I and I there there is sort of like an insecurity sometimes when you're posting stuff. But even though it's on the internet, I feel like uh, people are much nicer than. Yeah. Than you think? Yeah. Like, you put anything on the internet, you're afraid of what you're going to hear. Right. But I think on these forums, everyone's, like, usually just all positive. More positive. You might yeah. get one person that, that wants to troll and yeah. pick right. apart but something. Yeah, I feel like that's rare on these. On like a, Agreed. Yeah. It's one of those things. It's, I think that it's it, – the culture is – it's being artists, I naturally, we – create things because we do want people to receive it well you want to share it so sharing is kind of like not sharing can build up i think in the negative of that yeah. where 
you don't get the value of, you don't get yeah. the feedback loop of it, right? Like if you don't post it or share it, nobody ever sees it. And you don't get the satisfaction of like people going, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. You know, so it is nice to do that every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So how many characters did you do, Dave, on this game? On this game, I sometimes I lose track. I kind of want to go through them. So I've done one, two. There's a lot that aren't in the game, too. Yeah. So when we made that, Three. I was mentioning before, we had made an action oh. RPG before this. Oh, um, right. A lot of characters ago. came from that, and a lot never made it also. So a lot of these guys made stuff that was not even in this. Yeah. Jeez, you guys have a huge... I didn't yeah. even see the entire yeah. character. So out of this lineup, I did about eight characters, but yeah, then there's a bunch of other ones that... That yeah. I've done that Currently, I think we have like thirty something in this, and like we have more coming out all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we have thirty-two, thirty-three plus this question mark here. This one's coming out on what in a day. Um, so yeah, but definitely. But our action down. RPG, yeah. we have a lot that never even made it into this that these guys made. So describe just the basic premise of this game and how it works. I had the chance to play this morning, and I sort of got a feel of like if you took sort of like magic or Pokemon it brought it to life in a yeah. three-dimensional battlefield, you pretty much have that. That's That was my first instinct thought. Yeah, so these types of games are basically you, you collect cards. You know, it's like magic or um, uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone or whatever. Mm, mm-hmm. um, but on mobile, um, you have a mechanic where you have there's progression through each card. So, like, each character, like, for example, has these skill trees um, you can see. So, like, as you upgrade them, like, this this one's maxed out. You unlock different skills along the way, so you have to collect more of them th- to upgrade them. Yeah. So, every battle, if you win, you get these tomes that you, like, collect these things, and, and when you un- you open them, uh, you get cards. Like, for example, like, we can open this guy. We'll get a couple here. And so, like, you get the marksman and the zealot here. And so, as you That's get more, awesome. you upgrade them. But yeah. as far as the battles go, you, you make your decks. Um, every character has, like, a very specific role and thing they do. So in a way, it's like a small RTS, and it's just an arena battle game. So um, there's other games like this already, Clash Royale being the biggest one, and then there's some other ones. Yeah. But basically, you just have two sides, like any RTS, and you have like three towers, and whoever destroys either all the towers first wins or the most towers within ours is three minutes. And so each character costs like mana, and you build up mana over time. And so it's all about resource management and placement and timing uh, around the battles. And so the, it's a free game. All yeah, of this comes yeah, pretty free. much stock. And then w- as far as purchasable items in the game, what's the, the upgradable options? Yeah, so how the the uh, that stuff works is basically the game is free to play. So, like, you can actually progress pretty quick in our game if you just play 100% free. Yeah. But if, if you want to pay, you know, people talk about paying. In the shop, there's always deals for, like, uh, tomes that have cards in them and, like, our hard currency is this crimson, this red stuff up here. Okay. Um, that allows you to, like, instantly open tomes that you win from battles. Um, but you can also just directly purchase, like, cards and or tomes in here. So if you want to just speed up and collect stuff faster, you can just purchase this way. Yeah. Or you can just play the game and collect them naturally and just open them over time yeah. and, and upgrade your stuff over time. Um, and it's really that simple. Um, we have other mechanics coming out later. But really it's all about just playing PvP and your rank, ranking up. Um, and just collecting the characters and leveling them up and yeah. so they unlock skills and then basically building your deck around your current best units and playing people. That's yeah. very cool. So I want to talk about the ZBrush part. As far as what you guys are doing, how does ZBrush sort of come into play with with the design as far as in-game assets or concept? or? Yeah. Um, the cool thing, and this is what I was telling some of you guys before about our game that I like a lot, is it feels a lot like back during the PS3 days when we did 100% ZBrush for characters. Oh, wow. So we sculpted, you know, in, in like God of War and stuff, we'd sculpt the entire character. There wasn't like Marvelous Designer or like right. Substance Painter. It was just sculpt the thing the best you can. Yeah. And that's basically the same for us. So like um, we do, uh, I mean, some, the, our concept guys don't really use ZBrush a lot. Like I'll use it sometimes. Yeah. But for the most part, we'll get the designs and they'll just sculpt the whole thing, you know, all in ZBrush. Yeah. Um, and... It sounds kind of simple, I guess, but yeah, that's how we use it. Well, um, and I, I kind of learned this from Kate early on. Is I encourage our artists to just sculpt it. It's something we say yeah. all the time. It's just, just sculpt just, it. Just sculpt it. Yeah. Um, and that. they, they, like I said, a lot of the guys are younger and they have a lot of, they have a pretty big tool set. Yeah. Um, but I found like, it's just the best stuff comes when you just just get in yeah. ZBrush and just start sculpting it. Yeah. Like you, you can get some cool stuff with Marvelous Designer or some cool textures uh, with substance and all that stuff's cool but yeah. to me it's like 
just sculpt that thing in ZBrush. Yeah. Well, that and that's also the most gratifying and most fun part about that too. I, I, I mean, I've used all those other applications, and sure, it, they offer some certain benefits and ways to do certain things, but yeah. just being an artist, especially if you are a sculptor and 3D designer, it's making it, just grabbing something and turning that into something completely different, I yeah. think is so much more satisfying and you get the most out of that experience. Well, it's interesting how I was thinking about this just like yesterday. I was making something. Um, we like to, when we watch like movies and stuff, we like to talk about like something being practical or handmade mm -hmm. and it has that quality yeah. that digital doesn't have. But like ZBrush to me is like the closest thing to that uh, in the digital Perhaps world. The right. Where like even if I'm doing something kind of hard surface or a strap that I can kind of lay out in Maya and it's like clean, yeah. it doesn't look, if I, just start doing that in ZBrush. It'll look that little bit of extra, like right. handmade or natural. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the the more I can do that, the, the the better I think. I love that. I think that's such a great point. It 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 is true. I mean, to a certain degree, the, trying to get the realism out of anything still requires a hand touch. Yeah. Right. right? Totally. You're like just grabbing that brush and moving something manually instead of doing some procedural thing or yeah. whatever. It just ends up looking better for whatever yeah. reason. I think that's just the way it is in right. real life. And that translates to digital. Yeah, I always tell these, that's maybe Dave was mentioning it. I always tell them, like, because a lot of the younger guys will use, like, substance on top of their stuff. And I'm like, dude, just, like, go in there and think if, like, I was a dwarf in, the, in like, whatever world. <laughs> if I were to, like, chisel this thing, right. yeah. just literally go in in ZBrush and chisel that thing. Don't worry about some procedural thing and, and make it feel like it was made. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um that's kind of how we approach most of our stuff. And the other nice thing about our, because our game is on mobile, um, most of our designs are very graphic and need to have clear reads. And if we just like hand make it, we can like make sure those shapes are clear and read well and keep yeah. it simple. Yeah. So that also helps us just keeping it as just like yeah. a, a simple sculpt translated into the game. Right. What is your process as far as, so you take, you, you guys have the traditional concept. And yeah. you guys, by the way, I, mean, yeah. I, I on your site, you guys have, a few services you guys do yep. uh, environment concept or concepts cool. um, you guys do actual asset creation or look dev basically yeah and then full game development as well yeah which yeah, is so, a pretty wide so, array so, of yeah section started actually as a, they first started publishing like they did like media stuff and they actually made books so if you remember the original like God of War art book Homeworld um, they did the order like these really nice books oh, they were blue yeah. canvas so they started that as a service and then they moved into like as well art services so um, there's a couple guys Justin Yoon and Cecil Kim who have a concept background Cecil most known for God of War he mm -hmm. was like the lead concept artist on God of War so people would contact them for art services and that's how they started the studio was yeah. mainly art services and then they moved into co-development on started to get into game development because they wanted to make games Yeah. and so they'd co-develop with guys for doing art for them and so they made some games that way where, like, they'd work with a designer engineers and make some small games. And they made a few games that way. And so that still is kind of retained. And then when I came on, um, they started to make a prototype for an action RPG that they put together and they are getting funding for. And so I came on uh, with them and started to make that game with our team. We did that for about a year. And then we actually pivoted and made this thing. Okay. And so we still retain some of the art services because people still contact us. It's a sure. good thing they have going. Yeah. And then we make this game and we actually have one other one called uh, House Flip another team makes. That How, what is it called? It's called House Flip. House Flip. I don't know if you watch uh, Fixer Upper with Chip and Joe Gaines. I know of it. You know, I'm not like a, I don't a watch wildly it. wildly popular show. Yeah. So um, we co-developed a game with uh, um, someone who had a it's not really SimCity, but a fix like you you buy homes, fix them up, turn them over. It's a mobile game, mm -hmm. and they paired with Chip and Joe on it. And so Education we we developed that game as well. <laughs> yeah, but that's its own team. Okay, um, and they sit right by us. How many people do you guys have in studio right now? I think we have something like sixty to seventy people there. Oh wow! Our you team guys... is like uh, thirty-five or something, and then the others are like services, admin, and like okay. the other house flip game. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Well, this so would you say that this is your f your biggest production? Like, what would yeah, be the definitely. biggest? Okay, yeah, House Live is like a oh here we go quote unquote big game because it's very popular. Actually, it's, it is way more downloaded than our game right now. <laughs> Not you surprised. Know? So, so I, I don't want to belittle it, um, but our game definitely is um, 
Well, I mean, as far as where, uh, visual, uh, as far as ZBrush goes, yeah, this it's is... in line with our studio and like the stuff we love making. Yeah, um, but it's our it's our biggest team and our biggest project for sure. But uh, House Flip though, it does have a lot more. They were I was laughing about that the other day. I'm like, how do you guys share some of the <laughs> download love with us? Because you guys have the Chip and Cho power behind you. <laughs> <laughs> we could use some of that energy yeah. over here. <laughs> so, but yeah, we're we're definitely this is definitely the biggest team. Um, I, I guess bigger game. I don't know what would quantify bigger game. Um, as far as maybe the scope of the scope the... of like art is pretty big on ours with all the characters yeah, and I would stuff. Imagine. Whereas theirs is more about content creation, like the houses, the environments, and more about their their loop in design. Yeah. Um, and ours has a lot more heavy focus on like the character stuff, which is a different type of approach. Their right. team is much smaller than ours. They can do it. I would imagine a game like this, you spend more time with just UI like design you, yeah, and integration. Of of, yeah. yeah, it's like it's more coding than anything. You guys have a lot of. I'm sure you yeah. guys have a huge team of people that and are you can just see here. So like you get these houses and like you know you can like renovate them and fix them up, fix your upper. You oh, know, man. And so then you That's sell That's my them. worst nightmare. It's like a mobile game where you manage <laughs> manage your properties and stuff. So, yeah. So yeah, like one of our char- old character artists actually helped a lot with them on this and. He did a lot of houses for them and neighborhoods and things. Wow. So it's a, it's actually a large production in asset sense, but it's, um, yeah, a smaller team because they can bang out these assets a little quicker sure. than we can. Very, very low poly assets. Yeah. I can see that with the textures on. Speaking of that, so as far as your process, so you guys, you're going from concept to ZBrush where you're, are you guys doing full character creation in ZBrush as far as... And what surface texturing, poly oh. painting? Uh, it depends on the artist. Yeah, it depends on you the. You can speak on that more. Yeah, it depends on the artist. Uh, like I said before, a lot of these guys, they have like a. I mean, ZBrush is always the base. Yeah. Um, we're always reviewing the sculpts, but there's certain surface details or, or um, painting uh, material stuff that they'll do, in some it other depends. programs. Yeah. But it like, really like Josiah. I think he painted this whole thing in ZBrush. And then just finish it in Photoshop. Yeah. And we have like other guy like Chris who loves substance. So he'll sculpt to, to madness in ZBrush and then, yeah. you know, bake out all his IDs yeah. and then finish it in substance. Yeah. And you're kind of getting into a mix yeah. at this point. I pref- yeah. I, I do a, a bit of a mix. I prefer to see more – because, we're like I said, we're reviewing sculpts. So if there's certain details that, like, aren't there that they're going to add later. Yeah. Sometimes you have to, like, use yeah. your imagination to fill in those yeah. gaps. Where I prefer, prefer just, like, like I said before, just sculpt it. Um, so do you review like, when you're going through that review process? Are you re- you're reviewing like gray shade? You just want to see the sculpt the, the, the sculptured texture details yeah. without any paint, and then you approve that, and then it goes up to texture. Yeah, particular. and we're uh, kind of a small enough team, tiny enough team where um, we do reviews just looking at like uh, just quick renders. But I'm you know I'll go sit and actually can see yeah. things in the 3D space and sort of. Yeah, maybe sit with them and go and figure out any problem areas. Yeah, or whatever. But um, we also have enough trust with those guys that sometimes things that don't typically because look... they make most first passes. They make the character in like two weeks. Okay, so they're pretty quick. So um, we definitely have to develop a bit of like they know the process at this point, and mm-hmm. we've worked with most of them enough to where they know when to ask for things. But we have we have weekly reviews anyways. Yeah. So typically, like, we'll catch, like, obvious things during that period. Otherwise, like, we – I mean, obviously, we see each other every day, and Dave works with them every day. Yeah. So they'll go over all that stuff. Um, so but, they kind of start to know yeah. what they need to do, and you can kind of just yeah. let them go, and you get yeah. the final – And some of that stuff comes down to just the character design and how it's going to work in game. Because there might be something in the concept where you're like, you know, I'm maybe not sure if that's totally going to work when we actually get into 3D right. and get in the game. And we communicate that to the guys, but they're really good to it, just like knowing the game and sort of identifying maybe possible issues down the line. Yeah. Stone so form. they might get pretty far into a sculpt, and it's like, you know what? I don't know if that part's working. We got to right. really address and that. And I, I imagine that just that's something you learn over time while being while doing it long enough. You start to know. Okay, I know this didn't work out very well for that last time I tried this particular part, whether it's yeah. a you know certain detail or accessory yeah. or something. And part of it is just knowing the game and playing the game. Because I've worked on projects where, like, I don't play the game as much because yeah. it's just maybe it's not for me or whatever. So you sort of – there's a bit of a distance between you and the product. Yeah. Do you find that that helps being a designer in that sense? Do you find that that helps contribute or improve your 3D designs, understanding the game more, playing it more? Yeah, absolutely. Being more involved yeah. in that process? Yeah. I mean, first there's just a uh, an investment, more of an investment in something that you – 
you maybe play a lot and yeah. have a little more pride in. Yeah. But also just, yeah, just knowing sort of what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, people generally, if they're into the game, they'll have a, a baseline standard that's much higher already for themselves because they'll care more. Mm-hmm. And they'll care about everyone else. So, like, there's one guy, just saw in particular, he'll always message me, like, dude, is that actually going to look like that in the game? Like, <laughs> can't, that can't be finished, right? And well, I'm that's like, that is... I'm like, I got you, dude. I got you. you know, <laughs> I, I agree. But it's because they really care about the game. And now that the game's out, like, you start to hear this feedback from the community, and then there's now another level of care you have for it. Yeah. And because all the guys play it, everyone actually plays our game. Like, even... Uh, Max, he's an environment artist who wasn't even that into it at first. And then after a while, he's like, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> it's a good game. Which I guess doesn't like, yeah, happen always. Game. Well, like I was saying to you earlier, I, I was obsessed with Clash of Clans and yeah. more of the community aspect of it. And yeah. it doesn't look nearly as good as this game. It was very topographical and just yeah. very far out. I love being able to see the textures and the little cracks and the details. Yeah. Even though we were all talking about this when we were starting to set up this podcast, Kyle was telling me how great the game looks. I mean, as you're streaming here, it looks like a console game or a PC yeah. game. And now we're pretty proud of it. It's it's and it's getting better. I, I actually wish we could have the next update right now because there's like stuff about it too that I love a lot. Yeah, like ev- with every update, the UI improves. Like we improve like performance right. or like the feel of certain things, and and it keeps getting better and better. It's actually funny because when we were doing the, the action RPG, we were making things pretty. Pretty high quality. I mean, I think the sculpts are always good, but like just that the final game assets were pretty high. And then we started to realize things function on mobile, so we had to like crunch things down right. quite a bit. But then when we switched to this, we actually like opened up a little bit more space for ourselves. Yeah. And so we had to like, the so we then like went back up. Oh, so interesting. Some characters, like, yeah. I think kind of. I won't point them out, but like yeah. some of my characters, I kind of fell behind a little bit because they were early on. <laughs> right. And then yeah. you, you can contrast with some of the newer stuff. Yeah. That, so like, you see, you just... figured out a more efficient way to kind of get more detail out. Yeah. That figure was out. one of my questions that I'm kind of well, thinking I more from the students' perspective and the new people that are starting to get into these industries. It, it's hard to keep up with the trends as far as what like m- max count when you're designing a, a character yeah. in ZBrush. You can have an asset that might be 10 million points total, yeah. and then you got to consolidate that down to I don't know what your what's your what are your primary characters poly count or what's your cap for so, for like so, a good character. So we have uh, two LODs. So we have this in menu uh, version, and then there then there's like the actual in game. game version. Right. So a character like this, just one of those guys could be. It depends anywhere from three to six thousand triangles. Okay, and then the actual in-game one could be anywhere from like eight hundred to twelve hundred triangles. Right. Yeah, they're actually not that high, yeah. and that's what like I feel like like we if you go talk to anyone like you know, this one of our character artists Daniel's from Noman, and I remember when we looked at his portfolio, and they're all like twenty plus k. Characters. Yeah, you, know, you go look at Uncharted, or I'm sure when God of War starts posting their stuff, you're gonna be like, wow, that's a ton of geometry. And so most students come out making stuff that way they have no concept of like topology or right. like low poly and um because it's on mobile we still have that's why i kind of reflect on like it's a lot like the ps3 yeah it's very similar you know like our character counts are very similar to that outside of like you maybe your your heroes in those games oh You're, interesting so you find that the mobile platform is now pretty much the equivalent to like a playstation 3 console about uh, that power it's close in to between. i mean when you actually play the game it's can only do so much. Some of these games are looking pretty insane now. Yeah. You no, know, especially not Unreal is supporting a lot more mobile, and mm-hmm. the engines are getting better, and these phones are getting just like crazy. I know. So we're it not pretty honestly we're not that far off. I don't think. Um, but when it comes to the characters themselves for our game, because um, like you said, like in the PvP, they're like super low. Yeah. Um, but that's mainly because of the the camera angle. Like we don't need them to be higher. Right. We need it to run on really old phones too. Yeah. So we Do don't have all a, have iPhone tens. Like an know? environment of the because the view is about three quarter top. Yeah, I can view. just play the AI. You can just kind of see it. So. Um, actually, we could probably do guild battles and show, but the, it's always the same angle. And so characters are pretty small here. So um, pretty early on, we had to figure out, like, uh, like, do you know how big that gargoyle is? How many triangles this guy is? Gargoyle's probably... He's one of the higher ones. Higher than But he's most. also gigantic. Like I Vampire think, right there. What is he, like 1,200 or something? Yeah. These these two guys are, are a little high res older, but they're still probably under two. Yeah. Still. These farmers I know are really low res. Yeah, they, these guys are um, All these guys are under 2,000, and we try to keep them. It also depends if they come in. So, for example, the, the farmers there, um, or they're not the farmers, the... Uh, 
the arena stewards. The arena stewards. Mm-hmm. Um, there's three of them, so we have to be co- like, like think about that. You can't have three 2K characters, whereas Gargoyle is one giant solo <laughs> character. So like we kind of have like an idea of like a budget for a champion, you could say. Right, a champion. Like Hydras, for example, come in like pairs, and you can actually get more than this. So we have to be like, you got to make sure certain characters are low right. poly. Um, so it's case by case, but right. basically, like I know these hydras, those guys I just played, they're really low, yeah. and you wouldn't even be able to tell. Yeah. So it's kind of an art to, and I've always challenged these guys since I've showed up is like you actually don't need as much as you think, and they've all got to a point now where like they're really good at keeping them really low. Yeah. Um, which is in cool. a studio like yours at Section, do you the designers, the character artists, do they also do retapo? Yeah, they do everything. Okay. Yep. So they make it from the fi- all the way to the final end game asset. Mm-hmm. And then some of the guys will help with skinning and, and stuff. But for the most part, they'll then hand it off to a oh, sorry, technical artist. You broke it. And um, the technical artist will take it from there. But they'll set up the I materials, see. the textures, the end game assets, like whatever it, it uh, may be. And... Um, and do it all. In so. a game is that atmosphere, especially since you're going to most likely convert to triangles in most situations, you, yeah. do you guys find using auto stuff like Z Remesher to do a very low asset or any of those things where... Unfortunately, no. It's not... Yeah, well, I'm always curious because um, I see that still manual retopo is kind of the standard. Yeah, across especially when we're getting that low. Yeah. It yeah. is if you want to take it to the next level. Like, technically, you could use something like Z Remesher and it would function, mm-hmm. like, fine. But it's not going to be optimal. Right. You know, because And in like, this situation, you always need optimal. Because stuff like Z-Remesher, you have to have a certain amount of poly count for it to actually hold up. Mm-hmm. All right, you know? And for me, Z- stuff like Z-Remesher is really good for when I'm just sculpting. And I'm like, all right, now I need to reinforce this area so that to, like the, when I do more detail, it doesn't break down. Right. And it helps a lot with, like, a lot with that. You don't have to go back out to Maya anymore and, like, yeah. do whatever, you know? Um, but for in actual assets for the game, like it's, and this is a thing I've always seen where people who are new to the industry always trying to find some like tool to do it for them. Yeah. When the reality is like the best guys will actually just manually, at least they will um, curate the topology themselves. Like right. even if they use a tool, they'll then go back and work the whole thing. Yeah. Because you can, you like for example, we know our camera angle, so like like. ZBrush wouldn't know our camera angle. Right. So they, we know where to reinforce triangles. We know that, like, you know, how to make it optimal. Right. And it's hard for software to do that. Yeah, it is. Well, it's like you were saying, Dave, about just the hand touch of going to ZBrush and just instead of doing procedural stuff, going somewhere else, just do it by hand. Yeah. You get a better quality result. And that's that's the case. I think we'd all like to think our world is becoming very automated, but at least in the yeah. CG world, I see still so much yeah. craftsmanship is required. The best games are fully crafted yeah which i personally hope that it stays that way always yeah i mean the tools definitely have sped things up like night and day like from when i well you too from when we started working in games to now like dude it's like i mean i remember when i was using zbrush at first and there's one sub tool it wasn't even a sub tool right yeah and like so in maya you were like managing your you're like okay i gotta make sure my topology is (laughs) right all this stuff so when i take into zbrush i can do my thing right and just the concept when zbrush 3 came out and i had sub tools Uh and our minds were like I was like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden, like, that's where the tools are good for production is they just speed up the flow yeah. so that you can you optimize more of your time on the quality and not as much on the technical stuff. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the actual, because I taught for years um, how to make characters, and every time the breakdown for most people is they love making characters in ZBrush. Mm-hmm. They sculpt them in ZBrush. Then I'm like, all right, topology. Yep. Oh, gosh. And they they would just fall It's I, I teach as well, and I still struggle with that. I've yeah. tried so many different ways to rework it, but when you get to retopo, everybody just goes, what? Exactly. Like, And if yeah. it's new to them, it's a whole – that's why I'm asking these questions because yeah. so many people – don't understand yeah. how the necessary part of that and how important yeah. it is. And so would you guys say that that would be, as a student, you've got students coming from Nomen that now work for you guys and yeah. probably other places, Retapo, would you say that's still a really important skill to understand? I think so. I, yeah, because it's, again, it's not just, uh, I was saying this the other day, it's not just, you're not just making the, the, the Retapo because it's maybe uh, less triangles. You also have to, know where to put those triangles right. for deformation. Right. Um, yeah. and, and how to and to get the best bakes. Um, so it's 
it's yeah, because, super important to actually how the character will look and function in the game right. beyond just oh, it's lower poly. To get a say to get a high quality bake where you have a lot of textured like three D yeah. sculpting texture detail here, that's got to be very specific. Maybe a little bit more dense in that area, but less at the waist and right. more in some of those areas. Yeah. And it's also retoppling and UVing sort of together, right? And sort of how to handle those two things is like yeah. I mean, again, the sculpt. The sculpt's probably the biggest thing, but yeah, if you can't if you can't get your sculpt essentially in game, yeah, then it's meaningless. First thing sculpt, yeah. but then that's the thing with games is that how do you take this amazing looking thing that's ten million or twenty yeah. million and make, make that real time right. like a few so thousand? So this is the thing, like even like when um, I'm sure even with the recent God of War, but even when I was on God of War, you would think like, oh, these are like crazy high quality games. But to get to that level, you have to be cognizant of the entire technical aspect of a game to run it optimally. Right. So then you can push all the other rendering stuff. So I'm sure, like, you know, I, I joke about Uncharted and those games have a ton of topology, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean they don't take it into consideration on their LODs and, like, sure. every aspect of the game to make it look as good as it does. Yeah. And that that's what I love about games is, like, that combination of, like, the the artistry and craftsmanship of them, but yeah. the technicality of making them run real time. Like people, most people don't understand that. And I love that aspect. And That's so, a whole other skill set, really. Yeah. And so for me, being on mobile, and, and to answer your question, I do think as a student, topology, understanding is very important, um, at least to work at the best places. There's yeah. a lot of places that people might not get it as much. But if you want to work at the top studios or for good people, they see and look at those technical aspects of game creation that even if you're using a, a lot of topology, um, they, you, they want to see people actually thinking, like, I could look at someone's work and see if they actually thought through the process of optimizing mm -hmm. or taking into consideration so that when you work with them, they already are thinking that way. Yeah. Um, and then it just takes someone above you to kind of teach you the, the rest. Right. Some and that's of it's stuff hard you can to learn at, on job. It can, really. yeah. I mean, there's stuff out there, you know, you can learn, but um, if there's a surprising amount of, it's not a surprising amount, but surprising lack of actual teaching of, I feel like, topology properly. I agree. Because I actually don't think that many, surprisingly not that many people do it that well. Mm -hmm. um, like when I showed up at the end of God of War 2, there was a couple guys there, and Louis Liu in particular is the lead character artist, and like that dude blew my mind. I remember my mind was just like, what? Like the stuff he showed me on topology, I was like, this is amazing. Like, What was it specifically? Was it just, just the way that he constructed around shapes? Like, It's just knew. how he fully understood how his the rig interacted with the topology and how he you just don't need certain amounts of geometry. Mm -hmm. And and when he like showed it to me and broke stuff down for me, I was just like, wow. And like it was like this next tier that I'd never seen before. And yeah. I worked with plenty of people. Right. And um, I think there are few people like that that get it, you know? And then when you work with them, you're like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, so there's not a massive exit. Because people actually don't like to think about it, I don't think. Yeah, they Like don't. I said, they like to sculpt characters. Mm -hmm. Like in our free time, you don't want to worry about topology. Right. But when it comes to the best games in the industry, that stuff is usually pretty optimal. And there's mm -hmm. guys behind it who know what they're doing. I remember, like, looking at... Um, with my one of our technical artists, we were looking at Metal Gear Solid, I think, 3? And those games are always oh, beautiful, was, right? I love And, that like, one. if you actually go and look at their models, you'll be like, wow, like, they really, like, that's smart how they handled the back of the leg there or whatever. And, yeah. And it's, like, all those little things that add up that then, like, allows their game to look as good as it does, you know? That's one, that's a good game to reference. Konami in general, for that whole series, I was always blown away from... Yeah. The, that was one of the first games that just psyched me up for a real. It's not. It's real. It's a. It's basically like what Uncharted is now. It's yeah. playing out a character in a movie. Yeah. But like I remember playing that on Kyle's GameCube or yeah, PlayStation yeah. Two, and then it came out on GameCube, and I played it like five times because yeah. I was just obsessed. And yeah. but it's about the. I think it's like you were. You guys were saying earlier about. In seeing the entire scope of all of those parts that you have, it's not yeah. just about the the sculpt and even the topology. It's also what does the engine do? Can it backlight? Yeah. Does it fill in some of these gaps that you can sort of cover up these things and still create that illusion so it doesn't take mm -hmm. you out? It's also again going back to like understanding the the game you're making. Mm -hmm. Right, if you are making an Uncharted, he, Nathan Drake's on screen by himself yeah. for a large. So it's like you you have room for topology and, and, and yeah. you have to get that character right but certain games where there's tons of characters on screen it's just like 
knowing sort of what you're making and why you're making it and yeah. what the what it calls for. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Well, hopefully those listeners out there hear that because that's uh, I, I just thinking about topology alone. Like in sculpting yeah. is a totem thing. I always think of it as like masters and apprentice. There's tons of stuff online as far as resources for education, but it's very difficult, I find, to piecemeal. You get a little good information from this place and then some here and some here, and it's a lot of dedication that you have to spend just scouring the internet what? to find I, it, that information. I was going to ask, is Z retopos, or what was it called? Z-sphere topology? Is it still in ZBrush? Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. used, I actually used that for a while. That was yeah. that was our jam for a while. I still I oh, still right, use yeah. that. Like it was and I really still teach easy that. to use. Yeah, uh, I was like using that forever. We still get it's a like, lot of just I just start drawing out my topology over yeah. the whole guy and like yeah, you know. it's well and then it's of a, course it's a great tool. There's other tools that have come out since then, and we still have a good core group of our yeah. users that use these for topology. Yeah, I mean, if and, you're not in like you don't have to buy a rather software. Right. That's what's nice about it. Well, that's what everybody like in wants production, is to have we can one just be place. Like, you know, buy whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, not everyone has that luxury. Yeah, when you're at home, it, yeah. if you're working in your personal work, and yeah. you can't afford to buy all these applications. And yeah. I'm actually curious, though, like, because you're talking about zero measure, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't necessarily work for making our super low um, in-game stuff, but I still use it, like, all constantly. It's, right. It's, it's a central part of, of how I sculpt. But, I mean, was it created to create those... Like final lows, or was it more well, just the tool? It's like it's so many of our tools, we don't necessarily make them. It, art is always the first, the forefront of yeah. all of it, the creation right. aspect. And having the ability to remesh something and bring it to a low stage and add subdivisions is huge. Like you were talking yeah. about bringing in base meshes. I was in ZBrush at that time too. I remember the pain of, okay, I would go yeah. go and make a 3D base mesh out of a cube, and then I'd have to you know add some edge loops and then send that to ZBrush, yeah. but my base mesh had to be solid like it had to have if it was going to be for vfx i'd have to have the proper topology yeah. for rings around the eyes and all this stuff and that's a it's a nightmare yeah, and now in, so nice in zbrush now. i guess when i brought that point up in my mind i always just default to everybody uses z remesher while they're working in zbrush oh, but really? as far as output goes for these specific cases then yeah, it yeah. varies yeah and like i even think of like if before z remesher actually um making straps on a character like mm -hmm. in maya Whereas now I can just like mask it, extract it, and Z remesh, Z -remesh it that at baby. a low level. I'm like done. Yeah. And then subdivide it back up. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that I I use it for all the time. That's cool. It's something I always like to do. It using Z remesher with Adaptive on you get, especially the Z remesher 2.0 fixed a lot of the spiraling, so we get very yeah. clean edge rings when yeah. you go low enough. So sometimes I'll just take that with Z modeler and just go. I'll duplicate it, extract that part, and just do a little extrusion. You got straps or whatever, or clothing. You know, you could do that for a shirt and just cut off the rest. Yeah. Which I think that comes down to the artist, right? Each of us has our sort of our own tricks and, in, in like, the topology stuff. I, I still think it's, like, the traditional sense that you have a master and the apprentice where that information might only exist with a few key people yeah. in different studios, and they may never – be asked to make a video series for yeah. Noman or something yeah. else. So nobody might, you only get that information on the job from meeting these people, which I imagine is a pretty cool thing yeah. for you guys. Well, Kate, you've been at a few different studios, but Dave, are you, as far as your history goes, have you worked for any other places in LA or? Yeah, well, I worked at, uh, before this was Spark Unlimited, and then before that was Nickelodeon, but um, both were pretty small. They kind of had like a small, independent kind of studio feel. Yeah. And but I didn't really I wasn't using ZBrush professionally until I started doing some stuff at Spark that wasn't necessary. Like we weren't doing normals. Mm -hmm. This was still mobile. We weren't doing normal maps or anything. It was just mainly for painting and, and getting some detail. Yeah. So I wasn't really using ZBrush professionally until until section. Till section. Yeah. Wow. And so how long I, have you been at section now? It's gonna be uh, a little over two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. And Kate how about you? Section? Yeah. Same. Uh, it was like September of 2016, so it's like two and a half years. Wow, that's great. I think we came out around a similar time, right? Yeah, I came like uh, – there was another project, like a yeah, some right freelance after you, stuff I that we were, I picked up for like a month or two and then, and then came yeah. out. From what I understand about the games world, there are, there's a lot of movement happening with artists especially, especially ZBrush character artists, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. You're – is that what you guys – would you guys agree that there's – most of the time you don't end up staying with the place too long? Is Depends. there any particular reason or – Depends. If you talk to every artist, it's different. Um, I think most people are 
a lot of artists are always just trying to look for that project they really enjoy. Yeah. And there's very few, I think, that people really love, you know. And then, but once you get to a place like that, then it's like, wow, why would I go anywhere? This is really fun. Yeah. So I think it just depends um, the place. But I mean, just generally speaking, in, in games, people don't. It's not uncommon for people to not stay at places that long, just because like you work on a project. Yeah. You know, something else will come up, and you're like, well, that sounds really cool. And, you know, people just being creative will naturally just go places. Um, I think there's very few places that people stick around for a long time. Like, you know, people end up at the Blizzards or the Riots because they're like, I love Blizzard games. Like, why would I go anywhere else? Right. I love Riot. I love League of Legends. You know, Mm -hmm. like, those are where you find people. Um, And then you'll get the occasional, like, you know, like at Sony, like, being on God of War, I'm like, this is, like, the best characters I could be making. Like, yeah. there's literally no one else doing this stuff. Why would I do something else, right? So I think it just depends, you yeah. know, on the person and uh, the project. And So you follow – I would imagine just putting myself in those shoes, you might get tired of – say you get the position to sculpt heads all the time. You might get yeah. tired of that. Or I guess it depends exactly. on how much freedom you have and – if you if you get to explore your own creative yeah. ideas and those kinds of things. Yeah. Which, yeah, because some studios you'd think like, oh, man, I would love to work on that game. And then you work on it and you realize like, man, like sculpting pants all day isn't as fun as I thought. You know, <laughs> right. like whatever it is. And you're like, you know, someone else can do this. I, I'll, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll go check out something. You know, it just depends. Like mm-hmm. there's only – I think um, it wasn't that many years ago someone looked up st- the stats on how, mo- how many actual character artists had credits like in – it was like 20 – 14 or something, someone looked this up. I forget the year. And they posted it online, and they added up all the character artist credits in every game that was released that year. And it was mm-hmm. like 300 people. Wow. There's like not that. So if you think about that, then you're like, wow, there's actually – I mean, their games are being made, but there's only so many. Right. And then how many of those do you actually want to work on? And so it's not uncommon, I think, for people to get to a studio, they enjoy it, and then they're like up for their next challenge. Right. And so they'll then move to that challenge, and they'll be there for a little while. And then they're like, hey, that new project that's out, you know, it's here. Yeah. And so like – I don't know. Well, I guess maybe that comes down to, too, is as the tools and the and the technical side go. I mean, a mobile platform now can host this quality, which wasn't the case, you know, yeah. five years ago even. And it's yeah. been it, – it's almost exponential. So I would imagine it's only going to get better yeah. for a character Mobile artist. is pretty exciting right now. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on mobile for people to look into. Yeah. It's a gorgeous-looking game. I Actually, oh. I would love to jump in and play if we can just yeah. to sort of walk through the – the yeah, mechanics. Let me, grab, and, let me grab my phone and we can play. Oh, it, so yeah. Let me grab it real quick. So, Dave, all these, you said you worked on about eight characters for this so far? I think so. If I, uh, yeah. It probably gets to a point yeah. where you just forget how many. Well, like, dwarf, oh, yeah. The Dwarf Rose are they're almost two characters. Werewolf's almost two characters. But, yeah, I mean, it's definitely slowed down quite a bit. Um, Which one of these was the most fun for you to design if you had to pick? Uh, the dwarf, the, the butcher bros were really cool. Yes. Werewolf is probably the werewolf's probably my one of my favorites. I mean, this um, is a pretty big sandbox that you guys have to play with. Yeah. As far as the designs and the infusion of this yeah. sort of cross, you yeah. know, design. We basically like the history of it was like um, we wanted when we made the action RPG. We like our designer at the time was like people like tropes. Let's have tropes. So that's yeah. why we have like werewolves, Fer- Frankenstein, vampires. But then on top of that, we wanted to have, like, kind of a dark... For the action RPG, it was kind of, like, dark fantasy. But we wanted to have, like, this, like, percentage of, like, weird cosmic horror-type alien stuff Mm -hmm. just so we could expand the world and have fun. Really for us. That's fun. And so then we wrote this story to wrap it all into that. And so now, basically, um, as our game goes on and, like, one of our next updates, we actually, in our details UI, we have, like, lore for all the characters and, like, we'll, like, keep expanding the world. And we did it basically so we could have this kind of stuff. Like, you know, we have him and then we have this little, like, gremlin dude. You know, it's like, why are both these guys in the game today? <laughs> I love his yeah. default animation. <laughs> and he throws bombs. <laughs> oh, that's you know? cool. And then, like I was saying, like, so we wanted reasons for, like, like these are also, like, uh, part of that kind of group. And mm-hmm. so we wanted reasons for, like, basically um, um, – ragtag groups of people being together if that yeah. makes sense like why are all these people in the same world right. like what's going on so we then wrapped a story around that right. you know for ourselves and now that kind of breathes life into everything we do so like when we play these arenas too our arenas are actually all sculpted in ZBrush also I was going to ask you that um, So I, I saw some clay polish in there I'm just guessing but. yeah so like <laughs> if you look on the forum we can look at later you'll see a lot of ZBrush renders of the, the sculpts for the it's they're very much like a character they'll block them in in Maya and then they'll sculpt the whole thing you know 
That's awesome. Right. Um, because they're pretty much a, it's a set camera. Right. And for the most part, we want things mirrored so that the gameplay right. is the same on your side. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much like a character. Yeah. All right, so you're going to play one of us? Oh, yeah. Can I? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make you a deck. I feel um, like unless you want to try yourself. Uh, no, you that's be, okay. <laughs> since you're not as familiar, um, you you might uh, struggle here. So I'm I went gonna, through the tutorial yesterday and was yeah. like, oh, man, if I have to play this on air, then I'm I'm going to get my butt kicked. It's okay. Uh, maybe <laughs> and you guys and have I guilds. Play each other. Yeah. You guys have like work guilds, and you've been playing for a good year now. I'm trying to think who your simplest units to use will be here. Yeah, you need the Marauder. Who's the best? So we have a leader mechanic in our game. So this this guy here, the leader. Mm -hmm. So every character has a leader abilities. So like for example, his are actually this Hydra is actually simple. Every time you play it, you get an extra Hydra out the next time. So the more you actively play him, the more Hydras you get out every next time you play them. Oh, interesting. So like every character has a different mechanic around them, and they all have. So you can see this little thirty above his card there. Yeah. So when how the leaders work on a cooldown, so like he has 30 seconds before he comes out, whereas every other character you'll see has a mana amount. So at the bottom you see average mana costs 4.3. Mm -hmm. So each card costs a certain amount of mana to use. And when you play the game, you'll see on the bottom there's a little bar that fills up, and that's the amount of mana you're, you have and you're accumulating. So when you have enough, you can either play characters together or like right when and when it's ready. Right. So it's all about like So there's the strategy involved of saving up the right yeah, amount strategically to play the right. defending properly yeah. or or not using mana to defend, how okay. you combine certain compositions together. Um, all matters. I'll give you some of the um, easier guys to use for you. So like for example, these farmer guys, like they're a one cost. The uh, arena stores are one cost. So they're mm -hmm. really good at like There'll be a character that has like a special ability like Frankenstein. He does this big charge. So it'll be good to trade one cost card with him to basically disable his charge. Because mm -hmm. once he hits someone, he stops charging. And then you'll back it up with someone else. Versus like putting another unit down that's high cost and he just crushes them. Yeah. So it's all about mana trades across characters. Okay. And you know, it's and like you collect a mana over, over time. Over the battle. Just over time you okay. collect it. It's like a, any traditional RTS. You always have the concept of resource management, yeah. composition, and timing. Yeah. And the leader um, adds a, another layer to that. So, like, um, for example, this guy, he, um, his leader ability, when you hit it, this guy's he, great. he chains, he shoots his claw out to the tower and pulls himself to it. So, like, he'll, so he can like, cover a long <laughs> distance, yeah. basically. Um, yeah, so there's all sorts of stuff like this. So, like, this vampire guy, he uh, has his Omni Slash, and he basically does this, like, dashes all over the place really fast and does life steal and does, like, this super, like... Oh, that's sweet. Um, so they all have different mechanics. The dwarfs, they do... Uh, they get invulnerable. When you hit it, they'll get invulnerable for X amount of time. This gargoyle, he, uh, he'll lane swap. So, like, he'll actually just take off and, like, land on the other side. Oh. So, basically, you'll – you'll a lot of people will build decks around leaders and their, and how they function. Right. To combine with certain pushes and styles. Yeah. So, maybe one day you'll get there. It rem I don't think well, it's – When I first even started playing our game, I don't – So, I explained a lot to you. But, it's like you I know. was getting crushed. And I couldn't understand, For those out like, there. Yeah. What I was doing, and I slowly learned, like, oh, it's just like – Actually, you got to have here, the werewolf. Instead of there. Yeah. He doesn't get mowed down. Like, right. just simple sort of is this, a, is this You guys have platform – is anybody that streams on Twitch for this? I don't know just, what the mobile world is. I watch a lot of yeah. console stuff and PC stuff, but that'd yeah, be people, a good place to get. Uh, we have our own internal guy who does it, and then people, now that it's out, are starting to pick it up. I mean, we're not massively huge right now, so if any streamers out there would love to. Yeah. We'd love to support them. Um, but, uh, okay, I'm trying to think who to give you here. Let's see, Dave. On, who who, who should his leader be? I think it's a gargoyle man. leader. Or I need as much help as I can get. Gargoyle leader? <laughs> Goliath leader, yeah. All right. It's all right. You know, we're not going to overthink this. Where is he? So he has like a 50-second cooldown. So he takes 50 seconds to come out. Okay. Because he's very strong. Or, or that or, or Gollum. Just fun, fun leader abilities that are... Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. I gave you werewolf. So if you play him, he comes out as a little farmer. And he, and transforms, he transforms into a werewolf. So you don't That's want, cool. You don't want him to die. So like, don't play him in front of a character that will just kill the farmer. So how long does it take for him to turn into a werewolf? Is there um, a time frame here? As he's as maxed. Him? So this guy. So his his time frame. It's like four, four seconds or three upgrade. seconds. Okay. So a lot of people, if they see him come out and have like a spell, they'll hit him with it. Mm -hmm. So he life steals every time he hits. 
something. Here, I'll give you this spell. Let's trade out. Oh, thanks, man. Okay, I'll check out the vampire for now. All right, let's do this. Um, and then I'll just play this one first, and then... Little do I know, you're setting me up with all the... It's like somehow this is just not going to go you know what against I'm gonna your do? hard counters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to play these Hydras, so you'll see. They, they, uh, the more I play them, the more I come out. I'm actually count level six. I actually am way underpowered. So oh we'll yeah, see okay. how this goes. Just talk it down. Sure. Okay. Sure you are. <laughs> I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm joking. We'll just play. But yeah, so these all these levels are um, made in ZBrush as well. I used to play racquetball with all my right, When it comes up, you should be able to hit. Say. hit if I battle. won, he'd go. I only played at level three out of five. Yeah, no, you know. I mean, <laughs> I, can, I can go at it. Hit the battle button there. Battle? Okay, here we go. We should sync up. Can we get sound? It's probably not going to um, stream this through USB. Okay, great. I'll just have to imagine. I don't know if the volume can be turned on. Here, I'll put it sound on. Can I have sound on mine so you can hear it? All right. So anyways, you can see your little bar filling up. Yes. Okay. Um, that's the amount of man you have. At game. most, you can have is 10. So play one of your dudes. You'll see. Play skeleton and then play the, so you can only the woman behind her. Yeah. So you can only play... Is she long range? Yeah. Oh, okay, she's got she a bow. She has some burn damage with her. Oh, I so see. So you can only play on your side until you destroy one of the towers. Once you destroy a tower, it allows you to... Um, Cover it, more distance, basically? Yeah, basically. So, like, these dwarfs are pretty good. Okay. So there, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh you no. Actually, time? you played that right. See, so you use those cheap farmers. Perfect. So I'll play these guys. So some of these characters are pretty specialized, so you have to know how to uh, use them properly. So Right. So the werewolf, he, he he's pretty good. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to play the okay. archer in the back again. It's all right. You're doing good. Play your... There you go. Uh, so now you're distracted, and I'm going to go in with so the that, power move. The oh, he just up. jumped over the other side. That's yeah, not what I wanted. So you have to strategically <laughs> use that one. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so this is where farmers are good. I can kite this guy over here. He'll follow them. Oh, he doesn't have... See? Go get a werewolf. So it's a good cheap trade there. Keep them away. Yeah, okay, I see. It's, there is a lot of strategy in this. Oh, yeah. This is great. So, the deep, I mean, like if you're, I'm gonna get addicted. If you're uh, new to strategy games, then, like, these types of games can be kind of hard because um, they are kind of deep. Yeah. But in the simplest form, you play units, you try to attack the towers um, type of thing. Oh, man, I'm, I'm yeah, all out your, of resources. Drop your hammer once you get the, f no. the five unit. Uh, don't. Which one? Drop oh, right I see. On the main base. No. So this just goes straight as an attack it's to a spell. the main base. Well, it's a spell, oh. so you can play spells anywhere. Gotcha. So if people are familiar with like Clash Royale, if they have played that game, like they'd they'd fall right into our game fine. But if you've never played that type of game before, then there's a learning curve with like um, just generally how you know layout and compositions work yeah. and resource management. Most new people will always burn their resources fast. And they won't like combine stuff, or right. they'll play stuff always very forward, instead of like building up stuff in the back. So right. So you want to put you want to put <coughs> characters that have like high amounts of damage they can take in front to take the brute yeah, force. Yeah, like tanks. Then, like yeah. If you understand basic tanks, AOE, right. Single target damage dealers. It pretty much comes down to a basic sort of battlefield yeah. concept in that yeah. way. And then we have specialists that do different things. Um, you know, and then you once you start to understand all the characters, you can. Uh, oh, oh, I just noticed your the little sort of gem is the section logo. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. All right, we can go one more time if you all like. Right. Uno mas, let's do it. Let me try a deck here. Let me try and beat your high level count this time. It's just crazy when so, we, we put these characters together and th th we design the characters, and then the people start right. playing with them. Yeah, and start coming up with like different comps that. Yeah, because I'm we sure so think of people do things all the time that yeah. you guys wouldn't imagine. It's yeah. so like, for example, I'm about to play a leader that's a feather, and this unit can push units around. So you'll see when I drop oh. this thing, it'll spin and hit them, and it'll push them. So I can, can push your units and my units. Oh, that's cool. And then I have another spell I'll play that you'll see that um, is called Stone Form, and it will actually protect units, and they become invulnerable for a certain amount of time, just so you know what's going on. If These you want to change your deck, you can. I'm just, just, I'm just yeah. scouring right now. I'm just taking a look. All I don't right. know what I'm looking at here, but this You have guy, everything right here, so you're a little probably overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, it's trying to figure out the mechanics of what each character is really good at. So this uh, um, stone-looking dude that costs four on the top middle, he goes straight to towers. 
So like he'll burrow and okay. then he'll just pound towers. Um, the Giants a pretty good leader. This eight cost dude on the bottom right, giant looking guy. That guy? No. Or this guy? Yeah, he's a good leader because he will his leader ability. He floors everyone. So you hit it t- strategically, and then everyone on the in the game just get floored. Oh, for a few so seconds you, or something. Yeah. So if you time that with like other stuff, it can be really good. Let's throw um, him in there for... Uh, Gargoyle is actually... The Goliath, he's actually tricky to use if you aren't used to the game yet because um, he can be killed easily if you don't protect him right. Okay, let's roll with this. I have, I have All right. a gameplay question. Yeah. Kyle's got a gameplay question. So at the bottom of the game when you're in battle, it shows like four of your cards at the bottom? Yeah. Does, that, does it shuffle them randomly or is it like in order? At, at start, it's shuffled. And after that, it always... So imagine there's like a random shuffle stack. And then of the four, when you play one, it goes to the back of the order. So they will cycle through in the order played at that point. Okay. So if you okay. actually pay attention to cy- how stuff cycles, you mm-hmm. can assume what they have at that point. Gotcha. And like skilled players will load up with a bunch of cheap units and then like one, yeah. one strong unit and then just cycle through cards yeah. cheaply there's, to get yeah. back to There's strategies on cycling. I see. And like getting certain cards out quicker. Right. That's why stuff like farmers are really good. There's a card that generates mana over time that you play. It does nothing but generates mana. So it's a cost that benefits you later. So you can kind of just keep like low level on the board all the time. So like there's strategies amounts. right now with the gargoyle where this guy on the ladder, he can get like two out at a time if he does it right. So he'll cycle stuff so fast. Wow. And he's really good at defending, so it's like a risk-reward thing. Yeah. And, like, he's just crushing If you people. don't do it right, and so like screwed, that, but... So, like, that, on the point to it, Dave, the mana generator. No, yes. That thing this right there. This thing? The, no, 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 no. The right, oh, yeah. this. So that generates mana, but it costs you six. So it's, like, basically like a bank, almost. Mm-hmm. So, like, you're, you're playing it to then have more mana. I see you. Later. Right. So you actually have to know how to use that. Thing. So you could use that for like the farmer strategy where you can just constantly have farmers. So basically, out all the there's time. a time where you're basically banking mana to use it with bigger pushes. Mm-hmm. All right. So if you go up to the guilds on the top left, uh, click that little, there's a one icon there. You can hit battle. Battle. Bring it on. Cerise's yeah. Pieces. <laughs> yeah. Is that your name? Yeah. Cerise's. I have a Cerise's account. That's funny. My and ZBC then, name is Sir Scallywag, which. I'm going to have to make I that I put Serva before all my player names. <laughs> I love that. It makes them uh, a little bit more fun. Okay, so depending on... So I have to go first. You don't have to. Oh, okay. You can do whatever you want. No one's making you do anything. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right, here comes Vampire. Oh, gosh. He just pushed them. I really... So yeah, he's okay. that hammer on those two guys. Once I get it. Yeah, or okay. the Marauder. Oh, no. Stop it. Oh, I defended. Okay, sweet. But now I have nobody. So I'm waiting. Okay, so I got to go for (laughs) this guy. So So if I put him in front, your characters are going to attack mine regardless of what they were doing? So, yeah, characters always aggro. Um, So how it works is um, once a character is called aggroed on something, attacking something, they do not break that until the unit has died. Or something breaks their aggro. So, like, for example, like the feather I'm... Oh, shoot. The feather I'm playing will uh, break aggro. So, like, it's all about um, knowing how that interaction works. So, you want to put tanks and get units to aggro on a tank and then put damage dealers behind them, if that makes sense. This oh, actually, yeah, this okay. This no. a pretty good setup you have right here. So, thankfully, though, I have this, and hopefully I can handle this here. Oh, gosh. That Goliath is just, like, owning me up there. That Goliath is surviving. He's strong. And they always will – units will always prioritize other characters, um, too. So you can can abuse that. Like, for example, I can pull your character – if you're close to a tower, if I do it right, I can pull them across towers so that they basically are just walking more. Mm -hmm. So if you play with the aggro on cheap units and – other stuff. Um, Come uh, on. Yeah, that was good on your part. So All the right. towers, you, can you upgrade the defense of these towers? Yeah, so as you upgrade characters... What is, oh, I see. It's counting. All right, so this is one of the better plays here. <laughs> as you upgrade characters, you get experience, which upgrades your account level. Oh, man. That did not work pro, out. He's trying to pull the pro trick on you. So that eye guy. <laughs> I don't know what that... That eye guy. I don't know he, what I'm doing. <laughs> you defended this good. The eye guy um, does the most single target damage. Oh. oh, dodged it. 
Oh, crap. Use your leader right on them. Yeah. Now you're doing all right. You're doing pretty good. Well, thank you for for as confused as I am right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, if you haven't played this before and you're jumping in on... So you don't want to believe, leave him by himself. I see. That would be a good play. Yeah. There you go. Go on. Distract that guy. This is actually a good push you have going. Oh, I got one yeah, tower down. Yeah, actually a good push you have going. It's a little scary. So this is where I'm going to have to... Uh, oh, I can't go. Goodness. This is actually very scary. <laughs> Hammer time. <laughs> Oh, no. This hammer is pretty awesome, actually, that spell. Yeah, it's versatile. You just got to make sure you um, Get the long range. trade correctly, meaning... Um, I'm still trying to figure out the trading part as it's swapping the cards. Okay, distract that, dude. Come Get on. over there. Yeah, I feel like what I um, like, too, about the game... It's like the hammer, that me. hammer feels good, though. Take me to the pro <laughs> shop. <laughs> Well just, played. Good I'm, game. I'm going to get so addicted to this game. Do you guys want to play? <laughs> we should just join up. You guys could play each other. Well, we've so, been struggling to so, get co-op like work games going because Kingsley only plays PC, and the rest yeah. of us are on console. Yeah. So. This is good casual. So that's the total like goal with this when we made it was, so there's a lot of us that like console games and other games, but as you have more responsibilities, you don't have that time. So, right. like, it's like having this in your pocket to play something that tonally is cool yeah, and still fun. You know, like like I said, we all love games like Clash Royale and other strategy games on mobile. Yeah. But we feel like they're all geared so mobile-looking and feeling that, yeah. like, there's an audience that likes this type of style and this more, like, you know, the League and Dota type feel. Right. Um, well, I think you guys have done a really fantastic job of achieving all of that. It's, I mean, just playing it one thanks. time, I would... I'd, I'm scared to open this up on yeah. my phone because I'm so you had you actually had you were fully maxed on that account. So just know when you start from the beginning, I'm not going to have you're this not going to have a, a max <laughs> Goliath. <laughs> oh, that's such a tease! I'm going to go in and just have like low level duds. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's 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 fun. Yeah, uh, this is very fun. Yeah, a lot of it though, kind of what Kim was saying is like just like making. Stuff that we think is cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like when I'm making, when especially early on when I was making characters, like concepts would come in and I'd just be like, I'm making that guy. Yeah. Like that guy's yeah. cool. I want to make that guy. Well, I would imagine it's that that's probably a great work environment to be in yeah. where you sort of are inspired always because you get to do oh, so totally. many of these things yeah. that you're excited to sculpt and model and, and put the time into, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I was saying the other day. I was like, I'm like, Dave, I'm making this character. I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, it's I'm like a character I really want to make. And I'm like, I'm doing this one. Dibs. You know, then I get home and I know I'm tired and I'm like, I'm not going to have time at work tomorrow. <laughs> What's know? the process like when you're, <laughs> when you first get sort of the sheet of all the characters, you get all the concepts. Is it just a free reign of everybody? Do you sort of delegate depending on certain skill sets or is it kind of like, I want to do that one. You're like, okay, you go for it. Yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's a plan because sometimes it's just who's available. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes it's like we get to call it, and the, yeah. you know it's like a shotgun rule. Yeah, if you call it, you call it. And there is a certain amount of like I I think I know at this point on our team like who's good at what. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, everyone's everyone's good, so I want to I like to vary it up. Like uh, one of our character artists is really good at making females, mm -hmm. but he's done like three. He did like three females in a row. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I could out. just keep dumping the females on him because he's a, he he handles them really well. But at the same time, it's like yeah. he's good at other stuff, so. Yeah. Maybe I'll just I'll, I'll shift like w the style of stuff that he's working on and I just try to like vary it up. So. That's why I would imagine that's probably a, again going back to the healthy sort of environment. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's probably good creative leading to think yeah. that way and keep the team sort of inspired and change it up and don't get hung yeah. up on the same yeah. stuff. Yeah, you can't keep people doing the same thing right. forever. Yeah, but if there is a character that maybe there's, it's questionable. Like uh, this might be hard to pull off. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of just like. Know the strengths and say, right. okay, the, you know this. This is perfect for this guy. Is just give him that yeah. guy. That makes and sense. And the fun thing we have coming up that isn't shown in this is skins for characters. So you can customize them. You can pick like new skin, not customize, but like there'd be like a full new skin for a single unit. That's cool. So because of that, though, it allows the character artist to have a lot more options at this point. So when you're designing, you can create, like, say, for the werewolf, he's white and blue, but maybe yeah. do a variation of red and white or other Possibly, combinations. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we're hoping most of ours will be, like, full. Like, it'll still be gargoyle, but it'll be, like, a full new look, not just color change. Yeah, um, I see. So, yeah, so because of that, though, they're getting to make all sorts of cool stuff now, too. 
It's always fun to make the new ones, but it's kind of nice to already have like your template done. And it's right. like, all right, just work on this thing. You could just do one little model. Make of that. the the variant of this guy, and that's it's cool. really cool. I would I would love that environment. Oh, you guys are the best. They pulled up the ZVC <laughs> thread, which I wanted to talk about really quick. Yeah. So these are all of your. You guys have the full thread here. Is yeah. this just your work, Kaitin, or is this no? Everyone? I set up the thread, um, and then so I posted some, a lot of them, and some of the other, some guys posted some, but I basically set it up for them. It'll say, like, their name at the bottom and stuff. I, I posted my stuff and then their stuff. Oh, wow, look at that. So I made – this was some of the earlier stuff. I That's a few characters I had to do, like the, this guy and the vampire and So for Frank your and, brush sets, what's your go-to here? looks like you got some trim dynamics, some clay maybe. Yeah, for that guy, actually, I used a lot of clay and then just experimented with the planar brushes. Yeah. Um, I think it's, like – um, I used a lot of – what is it? Planar – Is planar A. Normal or something. Uh-huh. Uh, I forget. There's. I always forget the exact name. I always have to open a couple times to make. Like, oh yeah, it's that one. Right. <laughs> and then I have it, and because like you know, like it's this instance where I work like that on that guy. Mm -hmm. It's not like I do that on everyone. Sure. So like I'll be like, oh yeah, what's that like planar brush I used for rocks or whatever? And yeah. then I'll go experiment, and then you know I'll do like him in particular was mainly like really broad sculpting, with occasional like using planar brushes to just block it all in really right. fast. And then after that, I went in tighter and. Would use like clay to hit smaller edges and then planer them and just noodled it for a little while. That's very cool. Yeah, I, I see a lot of that in there for sure. Yeah. Do you, as far as your customize of brushes, do you guys, because I know I see this at, say, Blizzard, they have a certain yeah. brush set that you can get. There's artists yeah. that have shared. Do you guys sort of develop your own sets that you share amongst each other? Or you just kind of have your own wheelhouse of things that you each use? No, we don't, we don't do a lot of brush creation. I mean, there's some times where you know, you're over someone's shoulder and you're like, oh, how'd you do that? And then yeah. they'll, they'll let you know, maybe share their brush with you. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's pretty much what works for the artist. I see. Yeah, I'm the worst with that stuff. I'm always like, <laughs> Sherry? Def I'm default guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I have the most like, respect for that. You know, like when I show up like to the sculpt off, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to just sit down and be like, it's already tricky enough to sit down on a new spot. Mm -hmm. I always just like, dude, just give me the thing. I want to make it. Because I feel like people get really caught up with the specifics. Mm-hmm. And like, and sometimes it's a problem that I'm not as more into that, but like I'm more into just like the broad stroke of it. And then depending on the character, I'll figure it out yeah. versus like, this is my set. Yeah. Um, and you have to have this or you can't do nothing's it. Nothing's wrong with that. Like I, I will have the mo the furthest I go personally is I'll have a UI for like um, some materials mm -hmm. I like and the light. So I can move the light around for yeah. like default material, yeah. you know, um, that's about it. Um, and then brushes, I just, over the years, have found brushes I like that are already in ZBrush. And then um, I think the only one I ever really loaded in ever was, like, before Damn Standard was a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be because it did become a thing eventually. <laughs> and then um, that one. And then some, uh, there's some good, I think it's the pick Z, or the Blizzard guys, that Orb dude. Yeah. Who oh, yeah. Some of those, That's the one I was referring to, the he, Orb Cracks uh, brush yeah. set. made yeah. some really nice crack sets that are actually really good. Yeah. I would imagine those work really well for your style of yeah. game. And then I specifically just have um, alpha masks that I've just used over the years that mm -hmm. just work good in certain situations that I just have. Yeah. You know. No, yeah. that's great. Yeah, there's a couple maybe like outside brushes or alphas, but... I'm I'm the same way where most of the stuff is just straight from ZBrush. Like yeah. even like the vein, mm -hmm. the vein alpha. Yeah, where like I've I've downloaded a bunch stuff. of really like cool looking vein alphas that I'm like, but I always just go back to the one that's in it ZBrush. Just, it works yeah. well. I'm, that's good to hear because I mean we sort of pride ourselves on that yeah. the brush sets and their presets of what they are are the most ideal and was always yeah. like right out of the box. You can just load those and you don't need to do much customization unless you really, really want to, Yeah, which you can. You can go in and change the gravity effect, the pressure sensitivity, yeah. all that stuff. But this yeah. is the, – yeah, you guys have such a wide array of characters. That's why I was curious if there's any standard. I mean, but then, a couple guys are more – I feel like Chris, he seems to be more standardized. Like he has like a thing he does. It, it really depends on the artist. The yeah. biggest thing we look at is just consistency across them. Mm -hmm. And trying to help the artist stay consistent with the style. And as long as they do that, like, you know, yeah. we're not going to be like, you have to use a particular brush. Right. Because we've been experimenting with different ways of doing hair. Like, there's a bunch of different characters, or fur. Right. You know what I mean, and I think it's, again, as long as it feels 
in place in our in our world. Yeah, it's like we're fine yeah. with like artists trying different things. I always find hair is interesting. Like you can get away with just sort of plopping on a sphere and shaping yeah. that thing around and sculpting <laughs> it, and then some people will do insert brushes along a curve where you have like yeah. the piece that's just like little extruded rounded edges, and that just draws out a shape. Yeah. And that's those are multiple ways you can do it. I always show off fiber mesh where you can actually take that, take like a, a clump of hair and change the the segments and the profile so it's yeah. actually a cylinder and you just make that actual geo and you just yeah. use that and subdivide that thing up and then even dynamesh it, z remesh yeah. it, right. and you got a whole yeah. thing. You know, I, I've been doing a bunch of like um, using the z remesher to draw the curves. Okay, and then having a brush. That's probably the only other like downloaded brush I have, like a brush. To just plop on, you got the curve, curve. and then you, and just you can select just, you it. You can like, yeah. just put like sh like strands. Of That's a good on tip. This. Yeah, I probably err. I I am bad on the side of I don't like using stuff. So yeah. like, then I'll find out later. I'm like, wow, is that easy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's my fault. Well, or I'm like, wow, that's an awesome tool. Maybe I should take the time to learn that thing. <laughs> well, I always, I always, Thanks. I do like the sculpting of hair, just like getting like chunks and layers. Yeah. Uh, just like the volume of it, but then uh, sometimes finishing it. I, do, I I have a trouble with a little, like overlapping of, of of strands. So yeah. like, I found that method where I'm like, oh, you I sort of get a better base doing that method with the curves, and then go in and just finish with sculpting. Maybe yeah. I'm yeah. waiting for the day where hair is not a thing anymore, and I just have <laughs> engines just have plugins. Well, it, that they just had groom hair in oh, the engine, yes. and I don't have to think about it. That would be amazing because doing hair It'll cards happen. and things like that. I've seen other studios workflows, and yeah. there's always proprietary tools. At and the end of the day, a, like. Whatever manual. way you can do it, you know, <laughs> get it done. Which manual, I think you get the most gratification if you spend that time. Like, like I remember talking to Frank Zing after Uncharted 4, mm -hmm. and I was like, dude, like, how'd you guys do the hair? You know, because it's really good. It is. And he's like, one by one. <laughs> if you and I'm look like, at, yeah, I know you that can feeling. Google, maybe not Uncharted, but The Last of Us, they have. They'll have just placing it. They've got these, just the yeah. beard hair alone. There's probably, the it looks to be about a thousand little just polyplanes yeah. that are just distributed in different sizes. And yeah. Like. I mean, at the end of the day, you get like, maybe some tools can get you like a start, but sure. then you have to like go in there and like, it's like, dude, you just got to get in there and yep. move those planes around but forever. You, sh you should still be able to, especially for like a game like this, is just sculpt yeah. hair. Yeah. Because right, first of all, when you're kind of feeling out the character and finding the forms, like you need something on right. your head. Yeah. Right. And if you can at least get some cool looking layers. That's, in That's a good idea. Mm, it's a, maybe a ZBrush feature idea on there. Somewhere, some sort of like better automatic, because you guys still have to do card systems on some characters, right? Maybe not on the mobile platform here. It looks like you guys are using solid. Try to avoid. There's them. a couple instances where we've yeah. done it just for the in menu version. Yeah, but yeah. we, we try to avoid it. Alpha and mobile don't like each other as too right. much. Right, I can see that. Yeah. Well, it's a really beautiful game. The, just the digital assets you guys have here, the high res stuff is incredible. This looks like such a fun project to be yeah, on. Yeah, it's fun. That's great. And you guys have. Yeah. As far as improvements and things, you're going to be adding more characters over time, probably yeah. more battle environments. Yeah, so our team's not that big, so we have to take our time with it. So characters are a constant. Like, new champions happen. Like I said, one's coming out tomorrow, I think. Um, so every couple of weeks, we have a new champion that comes out, mm -hmm. and then new features are just coming down the line when it comes to, like, social mechanics and other battle mechanics, um, those will just come over the over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. And then new environments are, we always release like a new environment. Typically when we do a big update, a new one will get put in the mix. So like we're developing those as we go, Yeah. Um, which are more just kind of like backgrounds. Oh, that's great. Um, and, but the crux of our game is the champions in the game. Um, so those are always coming out. And then like I said, um, one of our not so far off future updates, we'll start having skins for just content for just people who want skins. Yeah. In con conjunction with the everybody champions. wants to customize these days. So that's know, probably people like be a huge just hit. people just like being like, oh, I like how that looks. I want to use that thing. So, um, and they're fun, honestly, and they're really fun to make. So we, it's kind of like a, a good double whammy where it's like yeah. people like skins, and we actually are good at making them and like to make them. Yeah. So it's like perfect marriage there. Yeah, that's like a <laughs> so we have a good pipeline, right and it's like perfect. Um, so yeah, the game will grow over the next year. Um, like we want to get a tournament tournament aspect inside the game itself, to where you I can love that. where you can actually like sign up for a tournament and like join one. 
but that stuff's all down the road. Yeah. Um, well, I'm I'm too. I was too young for Magic, but I was big into Pokemon when that came yeah. out and Yu Gi Oh and all those yeah. card games. And I just remember thinking, I would, I can't wait until we have yeah. that platform in like a full video game. And this is this is really in the best yeah. form on a mobile device where you can yeah. do it anywhere you want. I love that, and it's a really fun and addicting game. Yeah, we, I mean, we think it's actually very fun. Yeah. Um, now we just need more people to play it. We'll get a Pixelogic guild together. We'll yeah. challenge you guys. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to start. Kick we're, our butts. we're planning our first tournament in LA soon. Okay. We actually should let you guys know if you yeah, want. Yeah, please. Uh, I think it's going to be some. Uh, we'll see where it is. I'm not sure exactly yet, but like, so anyone in LA is welcome to come. You know, like some people in our our uh, um, the social outlets have been asking, like, hey, you guys going to host tournaments? So like, it's a thing we want to get going. Um, it's just or- as you guys know, it's organizing those like venues sure. and stuff. Yeah. So hopefully, it's naturally, we'll um, be able to start getting stuff like that going because it's really fun to get together and play in tournaments. So like at our work, we'll host our own internal tournaments. Oh, that's awesome! And like, it's really fun. Like, it's very competitive. Yeah. yeah. And like, so hopefully, we'll be able to get more stuff going around town to just get together and play and yeah, you know, hang out and stuff. Like that that hammer you were talking about dropping that hammer. I feel like it. We design it in a way that it feels good when it when it hits. Yeah, it has a real impact. Yeah. So when, when animation people, when people are in their room together, like with the tournament, and someone drops like that hammer like, at the crucial ooh. time, yeah, you get the, <laughs> those moments. Or what I did—I don't know if you noticed when you dropped it on my units, and I hit it with the feather and pushed them forward. Oh, I was I was so wrapped up in like trying to <laughs> <laughs> That's just another. dragging ah. stuff all over the place. <laughs> oh so, yeah, there yeah, you go. So we a actually good are topo I, reference. I was really excited yeah. to uh, actually. Is the hydrant here with the topo? That one's really. It low. might be. I think he. I was really excited for these guys to finally show off this stuff because there's just so many cool. Yeah, uh, oh, great! So many cool characters, and as they come out, we'll be we'll keep posting and sharing and. Sweet. Yeah, so like here's some of the arenas. Like, That's very cool. You know, I for so, I'm 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 so big into characters and creatures and that kind of stuff. But yeah. a good environment like this, yeah. I think, needs to be appreciated on the highest level. Yeah. This stuff is so cool. Yeah, they're yeah. really fun, and some of the new ones coming out are really cool. Yeah, um, like in the next update, we have this uh, this um. It's basically like Iron Giant laying on the ground. So it's this like laboratory. Like this, oh, we so mentioned like this like scientist of... scientist all the time in the world, and so we made an arena where this lab is. And so like it's this giant robot on the ground, and the chest is like the arena you're playing on, and he has like this little like heartbeat mechanic in the middle of the arena and stuff. That's cool. And like when you actually like look at it, you're like, dang, this thing's awesome. That's you know? so like, awesome. And the guys are doing a really good job with the arenas. And it, this stuff looks beautiful. It's incredible work. Yeah. And I love to hear that you guys are putting the hand craftsmanship into it, and I can see that. Yeah. Just across here's, all here's of one. it. Here's cool. Well, it also helps because some of the traditional environments, it, it takes a while from the start to, like, take form. There's a lot of technical things and, yeah. and sort of placing asset. But, like, this is, like, we can just see a sculpt in a couple of days and know, like, Oh, well, this is working. And Does it cool. help because you have the sort of you know where your camera angle is yeah. going to sit? Time. So you exactly. can focus yeah. just on what you need. So to. Our, our concept artists will design to that camera angle. They'll okay. just paint it like to look exactly like that thing, yeah. so that the environment artist can just take it and uh, make it. Although it's unfortunate because sometimes you, I start to really like love the arena, and I just want to see like. 360. You want to get a turnaround? But you can't, you know, something, there's, there's not, maybe not polygons and all of them. Well, right, maybe yeah, like maybe you guy. guys will go full console one there's day. There's another or... planar brush guy. That one looks, <laughs> re- I love the color scheme on that. Yeah, that guy's cool. Yeah. I like him a lot. That looks like a ton of fun to sculpt. Yeah, so, yeah, we really are glad to be able to share this stuff now. And Yeah, and we're so glad you guys are posting this on ZBC. People got to go check this out. And you said you'll be adding more to this as yeah. you guys go. I mean, as basically I've told the guys, and they know, like, when the new characters come out, like, yeah, just share it, you know. Yeah. Like, keep it going, and we'll keep posting. And that's Well, know. I guess that's how we started the conversation, sharing art. Yeah. <laughs> Which the more you share... The yeah. more you care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one's a, that one's incredible. I didn't see yeah, that one in the list. Yeah, is that mystic. new? No, he's he's in there. If you go back and look, okay, he shoots like uh, chain lightning. So like if units Palpatine. are near each other, oh, he'll gotcha. chain link attack them. So he's like a variant That's a of good AOE. Strategy. I like that one. So he's not good against single target as much as like when units clump or in a line. So he can. I see. So he reacts differently based on the group. Yeah, and his leader ability is kind of fun. Like when you place him. Um, it leaves a little ghost guy, and you can oh, you can recall him back to that position at any point with his ability. So you can like push with him, yeah, and then recall and then push again. That's kind of fun. That's really cool. Yeah, 
I, I'm telling you, I'm definitely. I already have the game on my phone, so I'm going to be playing. Yeah, let's. I sure. mean, honestly, let us know what you think. Um, also, we're on Discord. That's where we talk a lot with people. I don't okay. know if you guys use Discord at all. Have you ever heard we this? We don't, but it's like a. It's. I guess it's a pretty growing um, chat software for games. Kingsley it's, probably knows all about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do we? Really, oh, then I'm just. Dead yeah, right. it's like. A, <laughs> I didn't a, even know. It's a booming platform, and like, so we have a lot of active people on there. So, like, yeah. if you're on Discord, look for it's Play Rival. And people talk all the time about the game and give feed- cool. and we have like feedback, you know. So if people have feedback, it's the best place to talk to us. Um, well, com- communication from the audience is probably crucial for you yeah. guys. I'm sure that it just motivates you and, yeah. and also helps maybe inspire ideas. And yeah, they're really into it, and we're trying our best to engage and keep. Engage with them as it's growing. It's getting kind of crazy, actually. Like yeah. we had to, like assign actually a moderators for the first time recently. We're like we can't keep up, you know. And so like it's it's work. trying to engage with them nonstop is is crazy because we're yeah. also making the game. Yeah. So like you know I'll sit down at night on Discord and chat to people and um, I actually up. had a really good time. Like it was like a week or two ago around like eleven at night. I sat down and got on there and. And this dude invited his buddy from another guild into – he's like, you have to play this game. And so he goes, all right, I'm downloading it. And he actively typed through what he was experiencing. <laughs> and so we were talking to him about it. We're like, yeah. oh, all right, good luck with the first battle, you know, like tell us how you do. And that's the one <laughs> where you get just stomped. <laughs> and then like – and he was just talking and it was it was just like so cool to be able to uh, – hear his like thoughts as he went through it yeah. and he actually didn't know at that time we were developers so he oh, was just hilarious. talking <laughs> and like I don't know it was, it was really fun to see that and that's very so. good. well that's something that we experience in it's oh yeah I'm sure these guys started ZBrush live with the yeah. twitch streams and actually being able to communicate with yeah. ZBrushers out there just while you're sculpting yeah. it's really fun it's a yeah, freeing it sort of experience from like here's a video we made of our stuff yeah, you can comment on it you know it's just more interactive in that way. I like these farmer dudes. Oh, there we go. So I'm, I was trying to get an idea of what these farmer guys look like. <laughs> so the whole idea around them was they're really cheap. They're the cheapest cards in the game and the weakest, but they're actually one of the most used. Yeah. Because of, you know, just they're very versatile. Yeah. Yeah. And then here's some of Dave's stuff, I think, below. Yeah. Like he made these guys. and I really like that character. Yeah, those, yeah. Th- these designs are awesome. Yeah, this was like an early character where I was talking about, especially early on, where I was just sculpting everything yeah i feel like time restrictions as lead i don't get to like spend as much time as on the sculpt but right like, this is where yeah, this is one are, you got to spend yeah. which i can I see for sure guys. the straps and just like you were saying just about being able to move things around and yeah. Yeah. It, it looks very a sort of it's a stylized realism in there yeah. which and poly yeah, painting basically yeah. i don't do as much poly painting anymore that i want to do yeah yeah these are these are fun and we love making these characters. Uh, the paint on that is fantastic. We'll have to get some of the guys on the ZBrush Live and sculpt. Yes, please. That would be awesome. We. I would love to. I I was. If you I have was time. The other day, like I need an excuse to sculpt. Mm-hmm. So if you schedule a time with me, I will be there. Yeah. Whereas at work, I'm like I have other stuff to do. But if mm-hmm. you're like at this time of day, you got to come sculpt with us. Yeah. I'm like I'm game. It's the same for me when I do Twitch streams. I've been trying to start. I started a thing ZBrush mashups where yeah. I just take. I, I'm I'm gonna make a wheel that has random topics from the community. I'm gonna spin it and just take yeah. two. But I started one which That's is Blade fun. Runner in Super Mario. So I'm doing a Luigi style <laughs> Luigi mixed with Gaff in Blade Runner. So he's like it's very it's a whole thing. But That's fun. Yeah, so like but I'm using that as an excuse to make art because I don't get as much time yeah. anymore either. What, I've, what I've wanted to do for years and I've said I've I'm gonna do it was uh I don't know if it's still on, but there's a show face off. Oh yeah. It was creature makeup. Yeah. And just like Watch that hour show and just make my sculpt based on whatever, like, theme oh, they have. That's a cool idea. But I'm like, I always want to do it, but I just never like, get the time. Or- well, that's the thing. It's like if you can set up a slice of time, like an hour, but you that's it'd be, that's the sort of the commitment to saying I've got to make something in an hour. I don't have yeah. time to finesse and, and noodle with these little details. Just quick rough out, which yeah. is yeah. the concept of lunch crunch, which right. we used to do that at work, and we've – sort of fallen off because we just yeah. get overwhelmed it's one of those hard stuff. things where you it's f- funny you can keep the momentum but then once you drop it yeah it's like all right, get, get back up you again you do have it's to like build to momentum yeah. it is like, exactly you need to sort of build up to a place before you can keep it going yeah. and yeah. if you fall off it's like January every new year yeah. when people sign up for the gym right. you know yeah well the game is incredible my hats off to your whole team you guys did Thanks. an incredible job Thank you. 
And as far as there anything that you guys wanted to mention or drop as far as section studios or I did see that you guys do have some hiring positions out there for yeah, listeners. Yeah, right now I think we have – we don't have any character positions right now, but we're looking for a um, gameplay designer. I think we're looking for like – it's more non-Zebrush related stuff like yeah. back-end server engineer. Yeah. I'm actually looking for animators. Yeah, I did see an There's animator. Somebody, in the animators animator? watching maybe, yeah. Okay. Um, but no, I mean just basically like go check out the game and – if people have feedback, let us know. Like I said, we're on Discord and yeah. share it with as many people as you can. Yeah, we're trying to get the word out right now, and I don't know. We're really proud of it and look forward to people playing. So, well, I highly recommend it. All the listeners definitely check it out. As it's, yeah. oh, I'm gonna try and convince these guys to get on yeah. it too. We'll get a group it's together. Fun. Yeah. And then as far as following you guys, of course, all your stuff is on Zebra Central, yeah. which is under your name, Katen. Yeah, and some of these guys also posted some stuff. But David, are you on ZBC? Yes. But I, don't I think I posted that day for I him, think you, yeah, I think You've got some of yeah, these last ones were yours. They were yeah. mine, but I think they're all under his I post. think all the guys are at this point. Yeah. Um, I definitely was, so I went ahead and posted it for everyone, and we'll keep it up to date. Cool. Well, everybody keep an eye on that stuff, and if you guys want to jump on ZBrush Live, let yeah, us know. It'd be great to have you. Yeah, yeah, thank I'd love to. Well, thanks for coming out, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank yep. you. All right, this is the ZBrush Podcast. I have no idea what number it is. We're, I feel like we've just been kicking them out, but we'll catch you guys next time.